All right, all right. I am live. Move this a little bit here. There we go. Wait till some of you guys get in here. Live chat. Wait till some of you guys get in here. <laughs> All right, everything looks good. Cool. Chat open. All right. All right, so I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but it's not meant to be like the best production quality, nothing like that. It's just meant to interact and uh, talk to you guys. The idea behind these is to build a community. You know, something a little bit different. Um, you know, it's kind of cool just to interact with you guys. And I really get a kick when I see you guys interacting with one another. So I always think that that's pretty cool. It's all about the comments here. It's kind of dead in here without the comments. Otherwise, I'm just going to just ramble on and keep talking so that it's not dead air. All the speakers are in view here. Cool, cool, cool. You might want to turn that down. I have Lance over here. I can hear that. It's like a weird echo. All right. So yeah, yesterday I, uh, I went to ELAC Americas and I interviewed Andrew Jones, so that was pretty cool. I'm still in the process of editing that video. Mm, yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff. Andrew Jones, you know how to talk, my friend. You are not shy. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, but so knowledgeable. Um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. You spoke to Andrew Jones. Yes, I did. Um, yeah, that was the whole point of me going there yesterday, is I set an appointment to sit down and interview him and all, ask all kind of questions. Uh, if let me see. How would you get to my stuff on Reddit? I don't know if you guys are on Reddit, but uh, some of my favorite places are Budget Audiophile and Audiophile. Uh, on Reddit, you can find some of my posts. I'm, let me just think. I believe it's reddit.com forward slash you forward slash Joe and Tell. Uh, yeah, so I posted there and I asked, what did you guys want me to ask Andrew Jones? And so I took some of those questions and I asked them. Let me see here. Uh, what's that? You want me to read them out to you? Uh, yeah, please. If you can read them out to me, that would be helpful. Walter says, that is amazing. I always hear Andrew Jones design a speaker, so I assume he is some genius engineer. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, he, Andrew Jones designs speakers. Uh, what is it about him? Well, first of all, I think that he makes speakers that right now he makes speakers that are affordable that sound really good my opinion and a lot of other people's opinion uh, he makes some really high value speakers like good value for the price that you're paying for them um, yeah I mean before he has worked for companies where he's designed some more expensive speakers and so I think that's a value to us because if you have a, a design budget that's unlimited that means that you get to play with all kinds of stuff uh, and then figure out what works what doesn't work what's worth it what isn't and then hopefully get it to trickle down into price points that we can afford right us normal people you know I know from myself I can't really spend 10,000 I don't even want to spend 2,000 on speakers most people most ordinary people don't want to spend uh, yeah, 200. They don't even want to spend 200. What's up, Expert Joey? Expert Joey's in the house. Uh, yeah, so uh, as far as him being uh, yeah, awesome designer, I believe that's true. But I also think that he's like a cool person. You know, his, I talked yesterday about his accent and how he's kind of like, I don't know if you've heard Johnny I from Apple, but he sounds very convincing. Uh, I compared it with uh, Tiff Needell. What's up, Henry? 
Yeah, Tiff Needell from Fifth Gear. I don't know if you've ever watched any of those. But just, you know, when you hear that English accent, that British accent, it's just like, oh, this guy must know he's, what he's talking about. He's got an accent. I mean, he can't be wrong, right? Anyway, just something funny. But behind me here, I have a few speakers. One of these is not an ELAC speaker, and that's these Polk Audio. Those are TSX 55Ts, and those were their flagship at one point. Now they have, they're no longer the flagship speaker from Polk. But um, I thought it'd be interesting to kind of hear them side by side. So yes, I have been testing those. Um, yeah, the Polks, like right off the bat, I can tell you that the Polks, more sensitive, right? So for the same amount of volume, they're louder. Uh, the treble, some people might like that type of treble that's very uh, in your face. What's the imaging like on those Polks? Imaging, did you buy some Elax at the sale? Uh, Expert Joey, I, I didn't have these before. So uh, who was it last time? They were a very bad influence on me. Um, those, those debuts right there. I should take the grills off of those. Um, I will answer your question about those Polks though, one second. Take these off. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see if I missed any. Did I miss any questions here? No, you're good. All right, good. Um, what else? Yeah, imaging on these Polks. You know what the truth is? I don't have an optimal listening space for them. So most of the most of the times that I've heard them, they've been up against the wall, which is n not ideal for imaging. Um, luckily, they're front ported, so it doesn't mess up the bass too much, but. Imaging, mm, I wouldn't say it's anything spectacular, nothing that I was like wowed by. I'm more wowed by the concentric drivers on these Unify speakers here, right, right there. Yeah, I feel like they have uh, superior imaging. Yeah, yeah, nothing that blew my mind, but like I was saying, they're more sensitive. They have two eight inch drivers, that's pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> The mid-range drivers on these are five and a quarters, which are the same size as the woofers on the Unifies. So these are the floor standing Unifies, and those are the bookshelf UB5s that I'm always raving about. So those are the speakers I've had for a long time. I saw another question come here. My question, just a comment. Walter well, says cool, thanks for the response. Oh yeah, for sure, Oliver. What else, what else here? What, what's up with you guys? What's up with you guys? I'm, um, yeah, testing that Burson audio amplifier that I unboxed last time. What else? What else, what else, what else? So yeah, I'm just gonna keep talking about these unless you guys have any questions. I can talk for days about speakers, don't test me. Do not test me. <laughs> yeah, okay, so forget, all right. So let me know if somebody says something because I'm yeah. just gonna go on here. All uh, right. So Polk Audios, they're huge. As you can tell, the UF5s, these here, are not nearly as tall, say about half a foot uh, shorter. Let me see it depth-wise. Tech and Collectibles yeah. says, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, these uh, Polks are also deeper. Their cabinet construction is kind of cool. I forgot what the name is when the, maybe you guys can help me out. What is the name of what is it called when the box tapers off to the back? I think it's something boat related, ship related, something. Basically the enclosure curves to the back, which is cool. Um, yeah, the Polks do that. The Elex, the Elex do not. They're just a basic rectangular design. Um, yeah. All right, so let me start off with these. These are the ones that I've had for a long time. The UB5s and I bought them at $4.99 and I thought it was a great deal. I posted when they were on sale for $3.49 and now they're back up to $4.88. So if you ever see them for $3.49 and if you don't have them yet, just, just get them, just grab them. Uh, I think they're awesome. They hit 
They say, I think on their website, 40, 48 hertz. I don't want to get that wrong. I know it's 48. Okay, so 48 hertz. Um, I think they actually go lower than that in my, from, you know, from my experience. But I think they're trying to be very conservative with their measurements. How, how good, good are, clear are, how good clear tweeter are they? Which tweeter? Let me know which tweeter. All right, so these 48 hertz, um, the center channel has two of the woofers, and I believe that's 46 hertz. It could be the other way around, could be the other way around. On Elax. But these are supposed to be 42 hertz. The tweeters, okay, so that's a question I asked Andrew Jones yesterday. Now, compared to these two, the tweeter on this is way, I don't want to say harsher, because it's not harsh. They sound smooth, but they're brighter. They're very, they're much brighter, and um, man, what's a, they're sparkly, you know what I mean? Like, sparkly. Just imagine something that's sparkly. Yeah, they're very sparkly. And uh, yeah, you hear a lot of that detail. If that's what you're into, then maybe the Pulse. But the Elex are not like that, and I think for good reason. Hey man, what is that? Hey man, love the vids. Have you tried the Vanito Transparent Zeros? Yeah. I'm debating on grabbing them with a Dayton Ultimax. Ultimax who's, who's that? Uh, oh my gosh. S-H-A-H-Z-A-D. Okay. Khan. Shazad Khan? Uh, I think you yeah. need to go to my channel after this video and see my review of the Vanitou Transparent Zeros. So yeah, of course. Yeah, review those. Those are cool on the desk. Um, yeah. I like them. I think that would be a cool setup with a sub. On the desk, uh, my preference is uh, bigger speakers when you're not in that environment, if you're in a different listening environment. A bigger room, I think bigger speakers just sound better. Nautilus shaped. No, not Nautilus shaped. No, Nautilus, that's different. That's the Bowers and Wilkins. What's up? <laughs> Wasted in America. Or, or the B5. Okay, so back to the tweeter, right? So you're asking about the tweeter. And I even mentioned that in my interview with... Hi, bro. What's up? With uh, Andrew Jones, right? Not to be mixed up with Alex Jones. That's a different guy. Um, Are you selling any of those speakers? Am I selling any of these speakers? No. Man, all for me. Don't you, don't you, can't you tell? I need these. I need these speakers here. What? My wife's making a funny face right now in the other room. Don't put it on blast. I need those. He needs more speakers. Yes, I do. Digital versus vinyl. I'll get to that in a second, but let me just stay on the tweeters real quick. Uh, speakers is life. Huh? Need. <laughs> Tweeters. All right, so the sound signature on these Elax and other speakers by Andrew Jones, um, I think what he tends to go for, what he likes, is more recessed high. So I, I kind of prefer that also because when they're not so in your face, when they're not so bright, it makes me just want to turn it up louder. Sound over women. You got your priority set sound over women? Um, well, I'm married, so. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a player when it comes to speakers. <laughs> Everybody there is laughing at me. Alright. Um, we need speakers like women need shoes and bags. There you go. How about those bags, Angela? I don't need many shoes. How about those bags, though? I've sold a bunch. Uh huh. I've sold a bunch of speakers, too. So, uh, tweeters, more recessed on the Elac speakers. I think that's what uh, Andrew Jones likes. He's my friend now. I get a, I'm, I'm going to call him AJ from now on. Elacs are big. Yes, Elacs are big. Yes. Um, yeah, so more recessed. Now, here's a, here's a funny thing. The debuts, these are the first time, first time I've heard the uh, debut 2.0. These are the new version with a new tweeter. And um, I mean, new, pretty much new everything. Front ported so you can put it up against the wall, things like that. Um, these are brighter, right, than the Unifies. Right? So something that you may want to know if you're trying to decide between the two. Um, the base, I don't believe, is as deep as these Elex, but that could be because I don't have, um, you know, because this one's front ported, 
it's not gonna uh, be enhanced when you put them near a wall as much as the, the unifies. What was the other question? Vinyl versus digital? Yeah. I really like the W signature. I'm in love with my TH900s and Hi, Hi Feynman. Yeah. Hi Feynman Edition X. You should check out. You should check those out and the Stax ear speakers. Mm -hmm. The imaging and soundstage is just like good speakers. What kind of amp can handle the Elax? You know what? I think that's a big people. May, all right. So thank you for that. I'll check out. I'll check out all that stuff that you recommended. Uh, as far as the amp for the Elax, a lot of people think that you're gonna need like some kind of crazy amp because it says, I believe it says their nominal load is somewhere like four or six ohms, which is lower than the typical eight ohm speaker, right? And um, that may be true, but I also think that people don't understand that speakers aren't a constant uh, load like that. They're not a constant resistance. It changes based on the frequencies. And I think that they were just honest as far as what's the nominal, like what's the lowest it'll possibly go. And um, you know, I've I've tried it on a bunch of different apps, um, and I haven't had an issue with them. So right now, the Denon, I believe this is the S720, one of the one of the lowest models that you could get. Uh, was it a few years ago? Maybe a year or two ago. Um, it handles it fine. I'm using this old Marantz receiver. That's fine. I believe it's. It doesn't say that it's supposed to be able to, to uh, play four ohm speakers, but they're fine. This Burson Audio. I have a bunch of Class D amps over there, and uh, all of them I've I've been able to play them fine. Now, is it optimal, or am I able to turn it up as loud on those Class D amps and the smaller amps than as compared to the Denon? No, the Denon I can get more out of them. So as far as that. Uh, 4 ohm uh, spec I wouldn't worry too much about them uh, you know maybe ask around too maybe maybe specific amplifiers are more sensitive to that so yeah something to, to look out for but I wouldn't put much weight on it as other people do what else what else what else um, yeah the debuts I've actually heard the debut B6s, the original ones, I convinced my friend to get them. And I actually thought that the, the, the treble was a little sharp on those. Some people thought that it was it was too recessed, and so that's why he changed it on this one. But I actually thought that the original one was already bright. Maybe I'll just use it to my unifies. Do you like RVH oh, speakers? Sorry. Speakers. Oh, okay. Um, RBH. RBH. What is that? What's RBH? Are those some Klipsch speakers or something? Sounds like a model from Klipsch. Uh, yeah. As far as pricing, maybe I should talk about pricing. Um, so, you know, I get deals on some of my speakers, but these originally, I can just talk about like original retail. Of course, if you buy them used, it's gonna be a different price, but the these Polk's original retail on them, I think were about a thousand bucks for a pair. Like I said, they were the flagship. Um, retail on these UB5s are four ninety nine for a pair. No. RBH is a brand? Yeah. I don't know about R RBH. Is that like short for something or that's the entire name? I don't know. The Unify UF5s, I believe are around four eighty eight each. Something around, somewhere around there, uh, 488 each. And then the uh, UB, oh no, sorry, the B5 ELAC debut 2.0s are 249 a pair. What was that? RBH is a brand. RBH is a brand. Man, I don't know about RBH. Are you a hip hop guy or everything sounds good? Would the ELACs be good for home theater sound? I think they are. I like. I like uh, the Elax for my home theater. I have a Dolby Atmos setup. I have the UB5s in the front. I have the UC5 center channel. I have the Pioneer S SPBS22 LRs for rears, and then I have some cheapo Mica uh, ceiling speakers. Um, are you a hip hop guy, or like everything sounds good? Am I a hip hop guy, or do I look like a hip hop guy? I guess I do. I still haven't answered that previous question. Am I a hip hop guy? I do like hip hop. Uh, not so much like 
the rap that you hear, but more like maybe stuff from the 90s that more underground stuff that wasn't really played on the radio. Um, but yeah, I like all kinds of music. Um, you know, jazz. I think a lot of hip hop takes influence from jazz, so I like old school jazz. My uncle used to play uh, in Frank Sinatra's band. My other uncle, yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, guitarist. Uh, toured all around with Frank Sinatra, so yeah, Frank Sinatra's dope. Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Would, would the Elects be good speakers for theater sound? Yeah, I think I just answered that one. Oh, sorry. There um, are a lot of speaker brands, also a ton of them are Canadian. Canadian. Those Canadians, they're making some good speakers over there. I like those Fluants and the Cantos. Yeah, they're making... Listen to Lil Pump on 20K speakers is endgame. Um, I, I, I haven't listened to Lil Pump. You, he's saying this. He doesn't like Lil Pump? Okay. I don't know. I'm always weary. I'm, I'm 36, but I get weary when the, they start with Lil. Do you think the ELAC Uni FI... Unify... Uni do they, do they need a sub? Need is a diff need is tough. Need, do they need a sub? Nah, I, I mean, I would say for most music, you probably don't need a sub. I mean, they hit pretty, they hit pretty low. I know the spec says 42 hertz, but I would say I can hear some 30 hertz notes, you know? Maybe they're, they're, maybe it's a little bit lower, but I can hear them. Uh, so what you'd be paying for with a sub is Let's say if you're playing some really bass heavy music and you need you need need 20 Hertz to 35 Hertz Right, you need that to be strong. So for a movie. Yeah, you're gonna hear 20 Hertz for sure And so I I have a sub at home um, And I think that my combination of the UB fives with a sub It definitely hits deeper than the Unify UF vibes, that's for sure. I love but, my yeah. Gamma 2 ZROs, and then I personally think if you really want low end, a Box America F12 is a great add-on. Yeah, Bic Amer yeah, Bic America. Did uh -huh. you look at the DV? Devula uh, speakers, I have not. I still have to visit my friend for the Phantom Golds. Uh, what model is the Polk Floor Standing speakers? That They are the TSX, shoot, TSX, uh, TSX 55Ts. What was the question about the... The what? The Vanatu again? The, the Vanatu. Basic... It wasn't a question. I love my Vanatu ZRO. ZRO? Yeah. I don't know what the Vanatu ZROs are. And then how's the imaging I, I know, the wasted in market? I know Vanatu T0s and I know the Vanatu uh, T1s. That's transparent zero and transparent ones. I don't know that other model that you said there. Maybe it's a new model. I don't know. What else? What do you guys want to know? You want the inside scoop of uh, our conversation? My conversation with Andrew Jones or what? Let me know. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm, I was just joking. These speakers are not all mine. Um, I picked some up for a few people. Comparison between Elax and yeah, that would be cool. Elax and Devla, I think that's how. I'm not sure exactly how to say it. Um, so I'll tell you something funny. I asked um, Chris Walker. He's the head of. He's the VP, I believe, of product design at Elac. And I asked him about the Devla Phantom Golds. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Catch me up on this real quick. What is what's what do in you the... seem? What do you seem? I think means to say. What do you seem to find very pleasant to listen to? I don't know if that means if that's music or speakers, but Paris, oh, Paris the Unify up with Emotiva Emotiva amp. Emotiva amp. That's Emotiva. a good combo. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. I would love to try that combo. Emotiva, hit me up. And keep on listening. Hey, you went question mark speakers. My bad. Oh, speakers. Okay, so he's talking about the speakers. What speakers do I like? What do I find pleasurable? Um, TSX, bookshelf, very good quality for the price. Yeah. What do I find pleasurable in speakers? I think my main spec that I like is a good low end for the size, right? So I like to hear a good amount of bass. To me, bass equals, I might be like 
one of the old school bass heads. Bass equals good sound to me. Uh, bass equals it can fill a room. Um, so, bass, uh, how loud they can play without being stressed out, I think is important, you know? Um, and then, uh, a relatively flat frequency response. I don't mind speakers that have a little bit of character, as long as they're not harsh. I don't like harsh speakers. I don't like speakers that sound annoying when you turn them up. I like to play my music loud if I want to, and I want to be able to play them low if I want to, so that's kind of what I look for. And I, yes, clean bass, not not sloppy. I don't like hearing that floppy bass. Uh, looks like clean up the sale. <laughs> Have you heard of Audio GD? They make a really good op amps, OP amps. Op like, amps, yeah. The parts are all total for a good price uh yeah 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 audio yeah i saw uh i saw a question uh comparing the burson audio op amps to the audio gd i don't know if that's audio god or what but yeah i saw a comparison between those what type of connections do the elox have what type of, uh they have uh just a banana plug connection for banana plug or bare wire uh they're nice nice enough space to get your fingers in there I like I always like the ELAC connections, solid, and nothing that I've seen before. They're a little bit beefier than normal ones. Who was the one who who came in here last time that convinced me to go the ELAC? You are a terrible influence on me. <laughs> You're a bad influence on me. Brian, you yeah I knew it was you. Look what you made me do. This is not even all of it. Normally I have my car, and uh, as you can tell, Lance. We brought the van. Yeah. There's a reason why we have the van. What amp would you <laughs> say pairs well with the Elac B5s? Amp with the B5s? Hmm. Good question. I'm um, not sure what the what the ohm rating is on the B5s. Um, I don't think that they require too much. I I wouldn't believe that they require too much. Um, you know. N name some amps. Name some amps. I'm pretty sure all of them will be okay. What's the other question? Uh, Andrew Jones is chief designer for Pioneer and the same time runs ELAC. Is there any conflict as far as design, build, and technology? Uh, no, actually, uh, Andrew Jones is no longer at Pioneer. He's at ELAC now, so there's no conflict there. Yeah, he was at Pioneer. Someone said, I thought the van was to kidnap Andrew Jones. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, Brian said, don't say I never hooked you, you up. You did hook me up, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I got there like three minutes before they closed, and we ended up talking with, uh, I ended up talking with Chris Walker for about an hour after, the, after they closed, so that was cool. And then got the interview with Andrew Jones. So, yes, you did hook me up. You hooked it up. And speakers. So these speakers are actually going to go to some friends. Those are for my barber because I went to, to the, my barber. I'm like, dude, you can't, you can't, you can't have this. You know what I mean? What's the, what are these speakers? Chris he has is a his, cool dude. Chris is a cool dude. I like Chris. Very cool. Um, yeah, I went to my barber, got my hair cut, and he had all these TVs out. I'm like, all right, so you just this is a new barber shop. You got all these TVs and uh, some wimpy speakers. I'm like, come on, bro, up your game. Do I use Tidal? I've uh, subscribed to Tidal before, but I didn't find the interface particularly useful or friendly, and yeah, I can canceled you, it. Can you rip vinyl on PC? Can you rip vinyl? Yeah. Yeah, some of these turntables have a USB. Uh, yeah, UI kind of sucked on Tidal. And I mean, seriously, when I'm streaming music, I'm usually like not in the optimal place to be like listening for all the details of uncompressed music. Um, so yeah, I know that's very unaudiophile of me, but I wouldn't consider myself an audiophile. I'm an audio enthusiast and more budget audiophile. I'm trying to find the best bang for your buck. So yeah, that's that's more my style. And I can't tell that much of a difference. If I put on headphones, I can tell the difference between uncompressed and compressed. But for the most part, uh, yeah. Recommendation sucks on title. Recommendation suck, yeah. Um, I think there was a question earlier about analog versus digital. Mm -hmm. I have a turntable here, and it has some character, right? It's got, it's got those pops and clicks, and you hear, you know, and that's it has some character. It has some appeal. I can I can understand that, 
and people who are nostalgic, I can understand why they would like the process of putting a turntable on there. You got your big artwork on the, you know what I mean? That's all kind of cool. But from a sound quality perspective, um, I'm pretty sure that when they recorded it, they weren't expecting the pops and clicks, right? So maybe it's my record's dirty, so I got to clean it and all that. But accuracy wise, um, I'm pretty sure uh, a CD or, you know, a lossless file is going to be cleaner than that digital file. And yeah, yeah. I think, in my opinion, digital is definitely cleaner, less character, you know? It's just less accurate, less character. Uh, what else? Oh. You know what's funny? I was, I was listening to this, and they actually have pops and clicks uh, on some of their songs. The that books are rated down to 36 hertz. How is the low? Oh, we're back. <laughs> oh, oh, hello? No, no, you're not online, but comments are coming through, so internet's back. Oh. So you'll am, be, am I back? You'll be up and running. <laughs> Sorry. Took a nap. Yeah, my bad. Took a nap and you Oh, choppy. Choppy, you're choppy. Good. You're good. Okay. All right. It's all right. Uh, pokes rated down to 36 hertz. How's the low end warm up digital tubes? Okay. Yeah. Back. We're back. Yeah. Digital. So warm up the sound with di uh, with tubes. Yeah. Yep. Heard all that. Uh, Today I tried SACD and vinyl side by side. SACD sounded better. Yeah, I would expect it to. Do you ever? Do you ever has built? Have you ever built your own speaker? I'm assuming you're asking. Have I ever built my own speaker? Hmm. Quite a few. You want to see? <laughs> That's a table of all kinds of like projects that I'm working on, and those I built those white ones. Yeah, those right there. I built those. But yeah, many speakers. Actually, I built those too. I don't know if you can see those that are on the wall. Let's see. You can see one on your, yeah. That one. Yeah, I was experimenting with some different, uh, different form factors. Are you a headphone guy too? Headphone guy? No, I'm just starting to get into headphones actually. Didn't hear the answer to Polk low end because the stream cut out. Oh, Polk low end? Yeah, they definitely hit low. But you'd expect that with two eight-inch drivers, right? Ded dedicated drivers, so they better hit low. Don't throw up on me, baby. Don't throw up on me. Hi. Hi, my love. Uh, yet no IEMs. No IEMs yet. I have heard a few. Any tips for building? Any tips for building? Yes. Do it in space. You're okay with getting dirty. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come <laughs> here. Ask you to build me a 15-inch sub. Are you available for it? Nope. When are videos coming out? I know you can speakers? do it. Um, all right. So check it out. Comparing these speak. Um, I don't know. You guys want that video? What? Comparing these. Comparing these. All right. So I I built a sub one time. And I did it. I, we used to have a. I used to have a loft, and uh, I was gone came, all day from home. Yeah. Uh, work and school. I was gone from like eight eight a.m. to ten p.m. And I came home, and I saw this fine fine dust on everything in the house. Everything on like tables, sur any surface. There's a fine dust. I'm like, what happened here? And he was just kind of like smiling this weird smile i thought i cleaned it all up <laughs> but that the dust got everywhere don't don't ever do it indoors it was the stupidest thing i've ever and done he's like i built something <laughs> some some sub yeah with mdf so it was yeah, just it's totally... ridiculously powder powder residue everywhere it was a terrible idea yeah it was terrible bookshelf speaker you run an audio shop if so i might need to hire you to mod some speakers no man i wish i could turn this into audio shop that would Hello, be cool. Wifey, wifey. Are your wife? Is, are you an audiophile? No. Huh? No. I don't even like that term. Do you like that term? Audiophile? Pedophile. No. Nah, yeah. That's the only other file I know. What other files ne do you know? No, necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> what other files yeah, do you know that are good? Negative. Yeah, a little bit. You know any other files, Lance? No. 
Like that are are positive, <laughs> like a positive file. The only file I know is what I put on my computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Love files. files. Love files. Okay. Cinephile. I don't know. I've never heard of those. Video like file. Like I've never heard of those. Like you made it, like yeah, you just made those come up. I think those come from audio file. If I were to guess. I like I like Steve Guttenberg. My wife is laughing. He's, I like his intro, you know? He's like, he always starts off like all close, adjusting the, you, you guys watch uh, Steve Guttenberg? Always starts off real close because he's like adjusting the thing. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, this is Steve Guttenberg and I am the audio feeling. Yeah, I like that guy. Haven't met him yet, but I watch his videos. Oh yeah, the tips for building. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Audio so tips for building. All right, so here are the tips for building. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, tips for building. Let me think here. Let me let me try to give you a really good answer. Tips for building. All right, so here are a few tips, right? So the the obvious stuff is things that are things that you would look up and they're gonna say everywhere, which are. Um, you know, make sure that you have a driver that's crossed over. Make sure all the drivers match and all that. That's typical. I would say, make sure the speakers look cool. I know it sounds weird, but you know, if you make speakers that look good, it makes you want to use them. All right. So, be be conscious of how the speakers look. Right. Unless you're gonna put a grill on them and it doesn't matter. But yeah, make sure that they look cool in your space. Broke file. <laughs> Um, what else? Other tips. Um, okay, the other other tips are um, to to not trust the measurements that you see on the website. You know, not 100% because it's gonna sound different different once you get them into a box. So use those specs that you see on the website. Just just you know, generally speaking. But if you're designing a crossover network, what you're gonna want to do is take that speaker. Put it into the box, right? So the box, you, this is the tough part of speaker design, is you may have to adjust the box numerous times, which is the hard part because you can't make a box like that, right? You can model stuff pretty quickly, but what I'm saying is when you put that speaker into a box, it's gonna measure a certain way. And you may have to make changes to the box based on how they measure, things like that. So yeah, that's it's kind of a trial and error process. But you're gonna want want to put the speaker in the box, measure it. You may have to change up the box, and then see where the crossover is, how the you know how how it responds. The drivers respond when they're in a box. You may have to change the box, change the crossover, and then do it all over again. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. That's why I'm, you know, I know speakers aren't the cheapest things in the world. But after you try to make a pair of speakers that sound good, you you're you're gonna be spending a good amount of time, right? That's what you're paying for. You're you're paying for somebody else to do all that research, and to be able to just pick them up from the store, plug them in, and they sound awesome. You know. Uh, Cheyenne asks why quote better way to listen music quote is underrated. Uh. Better way to listen to music. Mm -hmm. What's a better way to listen to music? No idea. That's what it says. Uh, your audio and video apparently aren't synced. My audio and video are not synced right now. Well. Blame my phone. I'm using a Pixel 2 XL right now. I'm going uh, low tech. Do you prefer speakers for music or for home theater? Uh, both. I want I want my speakers to work in both scenarios. Great video with the Sennheiser 416 and the Deity S Mic 2. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, the Deity S Mic 2 is awesome. Still think it's awesome. Yeah, this video I'm probably not going to make public. So after it's gone from here, it's done. Yeah. I'm not gonna post this. This is just to hang out with you guys. Uh, like buying good pairs. Good I am audio seems to be in sync. Okay, in sync for you guys. Um, yeah, I think here's a good way to listen to music. And I don't think a lot of people do it, is to sit down and listen to music with the intention of listening to music. With the only intention being to listen to music. Not I'm gonna listen to music and I'm gonna do the laundry. 
you know, sit down and actually concentrate, listen to the music, listen to the words. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good thing to do. And that's how you can enjoy your speakers too. You know, sit down and actually enjoy music. I think music for a lot of people right now is just background, you know, something that playing in the background so it's not silent. And uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. People don't realize I have for regarding headphone monitors. All right. People don't realize how much R&D goes into speakers and headphones. More younger people are getting into high-end audio. I hope more young people get into high-end audio or even any kind of budget audio, decent audio. You know, I'd love for that to happen. PC died last night, so I'm on my phone. All right. Good. You can, uh, Brian will be less of a bad influence because you won't be able to type as fast. <laughs> what else? Let's see other comments here. Uh, head. Okay, go ahead. Ask your question about the headphone monitors. People that listen to music through their phone or laptop speakers drive me nuts. Yeah, man. All right, so I'll tell you a quick story. I had a customer come in, and he said, I mean, this guy, he can afford some speakers, right? I'm Brian. <laughs> yeah. Um, he could afford some speakers, and, you know, he's, he's, he's a friend of mine. And I told him, like, what's up? Do you have speakers at your house? No. I just listen on my either my TV speakers, built-in TV speakers, or uh, the speakers on his iMac. Listen to the back sounds of music like the instruments. My JBL LSR 305s help a lot with that. Yeah, I'll get to those in a second. Let me tell this story. So, um, yeah, he said he's been listening on. I'm going to turn this off because I got to distract him from my story. All right, so he said he listens to music on his TV or his iMac. And he had a party the other day and he said like, yeah, it was fine. I was just playing music through my iMac. I'm like, what? You can't be, ha you can't have a party and listen to music on your computer. You crazy? I'm like, yeah, people probably didn't mind, but I'm pretty sure they weren't dancing either. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, I ended up trying to convince him like, dude, just get some inexpensive speakers. They're not, ex you know, you're not going to break the bank to get some decent speakers. And, um, I think the demo that really worked was I said, L do this. I'm pretty sure you have a, a big TV. You bought the, the latest and greatest on Black Friday, got yourself a big TV. You didn't bother to even get a sound bar, right? And not that I'm even excited about sound bars, but you didn't even bother to get a sound bar. So, dude, anyway, what I ended up doing is I'm like, I played a, uh, the Avengers uh, uh, trailer on my phone and I had the Bluetooth to the Fluence AI-40s over there. And I'm like, tell me which, what's more engaging. You know, watching on your TV with those wimpy speakers on there or on my phone on this little Pixel 2 XL with some good speakers. And everybody was like, this is amazing. Like everybody's just like watching on this little screen because of the sound. So there you go. All right, I missed a bunch of questions. Okay, so. Uh, what do you what headphones do you recommend for a Comtech that under a hundred dollars? Uh, mm, headphones under a hundred bucks. Um, depends on what they're for. Come back and come back and let me know what you're going to be using them for. Mostly. I escape with my open back headphones and my headphone amp mostly. Mm -hmm. Do you do do you do location spun mixing for film and video? No, no, I don't do. Oh, uh, sound, I don't do location sound professionally. I just only reason I have some decent mics is for uh, for YouTube. Not that I'm using a good one right now. This is just my my phone right now. Um, there are many affordable ways to get very good sound nowadays. People have no idea what they are missing. Have you been to a Rocky Mountain Audio Fest? No, I want to go. Not yet. Uh, yes, SHP ninety five hundreds are a good deal. Uh, actually, those those went up in price since I did the review. I got mine for like thirty something bucks, under forty bucks. Um, they were they were like a return on uh, Newegg, so I just picked them up. Um, but now they're they've like skyrocketed in price. They're over like a hundred bucks sometimes. 
So I don't know if that's a great deal in the SHP 9500s anymore. I do like those new ones that I just reviewed though. That uh, Shaking My Head 580s, SMH 580s. I think they sound really good. There's alternatives to those. The Samson SR 850s and the Superlux HD, forgot, HD something. Uh, same, pretty much the same headphone. Uh, and they're 24 bucks, uh, semi open back, and they sound awesome. They're like, they go down to like 10 hertz, something stupid. Cost Porter Pros, I've had Cost, Port uh, Cost Porter Pros. Uh, M40Xs, yes, Expert Joey. I've had M40Xs. I currently have the M50Xs, and I kind of I don't know. I kind of like the M40s. Now, like looking back, I like the M40s a little bit better. They were a little bit lighter. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they were a better deal. Uh, I just like the color scheme on the M50s that I have. Yeah, I kind of, I, I think the M40s are better. M50 are garbage. I don't know if they're garbage. Damn. They might not be the best, but I don't know if they're garbage. <laughs> M50Xs can be good for 100 if you look, yeah. Yeah, you guys are harsh. Hey, yeah, the M M40s are, are good. You know, the M50s, though, those are garbage. <laughs> I need good album recommendations. Album recommendations? Oh, uh, I, can't, I can't recommend music to people. That's weird. It's like trying to recommend food at a restaurant. You're not going to get it, right? Change the pad on the M50s, yeah. Can't recommend food. And 50s got some hate. <laughs> yeah, because they get so much love. So people, I feel like people want to balance it out. Like they get, like M50s get so much love from YouTubers, from uh, MKBHD, and all the other other guys that are just like saying so much good stuff about it. People want to like balance it out by by giving it a bunch of hate. They're not terrible. They're not terrible. They're they're not the greatest things in the world. The the worst part about them to me. Uh, the worst part is that they're uncomfortable for long listening periods and they sound very closed off you know what I mean there's no imaging there's no sound stage they sound very closed in MDR 7506s I love those 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 are awesome too but you could say some bad stuff about the 7506s too right like big coil cable um, not super comfortable for long listening periods for me um, I don't know the bass maybe is not maybe it's not as bassy as some of the other ones, you know, you know. Do you have any in-ear headphones? In-ear? I don't know too much about in-ear headphones actually. Have you heard of one more? I haven't heard of one more. My Sounds like. Awesome. <laughs> They're studio monitors. Okay. M50s. You can't say things too bad. They were made in the 80s. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I can't, dude. Um, the 7506s, I think, like, to me, are very revealing. And uh, I think that's that's good if you're trying to do something professional. But a lot of times, I'm just trying to enjoy some music. You know, I don't want to hear everything, like, perfectly. I know that sounds weird, but I, some, there's a difference between fun sound and accurate sound, right? Let's see, case budget items, thirty bucks. Four drivers, four drivers in each year. Favorite budget bookshelf speakers? Budget. What? What? What do you consider budget? Give me a give me a price, and I'll tell you for each price point. Let's go. Let's go. Different price points. Let's see it. I'm waiting. There's a delay. All right. Five bucks. Under five bucks. Um, <laughs> favorite, I don't know what speakers that are under five bucks, but I'm pretty sure that uh, if you go into the alley, just drive through, you might find some speakers and yeah. under five bucks, exactly. you're good. Yeah, I picked up some, some bows, some bows like 301s or something in an alley, and those were free 99. Cool with those. Under 200 bucks, under 200. Um, under 200. I would say 
go on Craigslist and find uh, the highest end speakers you can get for 200 will probably be the best deal. Brand new, I would say maybe the ELAC B5s, the older model, I think are under 200. 500? Under 500? UB fives all the way. Personal opinion though. I love them. Chuck some clouds, bro. <laughs> Mr. Mofo, chuck some clouds. That's not me. I don't I don't even vape. No highs, no lows, that's bows. Huh? I don't vape. I really don't. How about a hundred? A hundred bucks? I like I like a hundred bucks because that's such a challenge. Uh, under a hundred bucks if you can get them. The Pioneer SPBS 22 LRs from Andrew Jones. Those are pretty awesome. Um, a lot of people will say the Micah MB42 Xs, and I have those too. I think they have a cool crossover design, but I don't think that they sound better than the Pioneers, personally. Expert Joey, come by and visit me sometime. We have the same taste. Under 150? All right, so that, actually, this is a good question because there is a difference between 100 and 150. That extra 50 bucks makes a difference when you're at that low of a budget, right? 150. 150. I'm trying to think here. Mm, not used, so so let's just go not used. New. 150 bucks. Shoot, man. Oh, yeah, there you go. Fluence SX, SX6. Paid 60 gold. I think that's a good recommendation. SX6 is good recommendation. I like Fluence's stuff. I actually consider the saying the AI40s, which are powered speakers, but those are 199. So a little bit over. Are the Pioneers still available? Pioneers? Um, what are they? I think sometimes they fluctuate. I've seen them for. 100 bucks, I've seen, I've seen them for a 129. Yeah, they, they're up and down. But yeah, used is a fun way to start too. Yeah, because audio, everybody knows there's a big markup on audio gear. So you can save a lot of money if you can find something on Craigslist. Yeah. If you're going to go if you're going to budget, get powered IMO. Gonna go budget, go powered, yeah? It's not a bad, and I think that's a good recommendation to go with powered if you're gonna uh, try to save money on, you know, on speakers. Just because with powered, they can do a lot of stuff with DSP to make the speaker sound better than they actually should, right? Anything under a thousand bucks. Under a thousand bucks? Uh, yeah, get those, get those uh, ELAC, uh, you well, hold on. I don't know. Why I forgot the name all of a sudden. UF fives, UF fives. I like vintage audio too. Grab some speakers that are in the thousands for now. They're cheap. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's and amps too. LS fifties are. Mm, are they under a thousand bucks? I don't think so. I think they're like twelve hundred bucks. No. I might be wrong. Another another uh, speaker that I haven't tried, but a lot of people recommend, are the uh, Kef Q100s. Uh, if you're un trying to look under 150, I haven't tried them personally, but I trust some of the people who do recommend them. Another one uh, under 100, actually, shoot, uh, Micah makes another one called the Club Three, which are pretty. Mm, I don't know if you can get them cheap, they're all right. What else here? SVS PB 1000s, 10 inch. Depends on your room if you're looking for a sub. You know what? I think I wanna, I wanna talk to, to SVS. They seem pretty nice to YouTubers. Maybe I should contact SVS and, and test out some of their subs. SX6 squeezes into the list if you, yeah, I like the SX6. Klipsch, mm. I haven't listened to the Klipsch, but if I were to guess, looking at those horns, they're probably not gonna be my favorite. Cause I said earlier, I'm not into that type of like bright sound. They look like they're gonna be harsh, 
I've never tried them, so I can't say for sure if that's true or not. Uh, SVS, yeah. Yeah, everybody seems to like SVS. Back in the day, it used to be like uh, SU, right? H S U. Message retracted. I want to see. I know. I was like thinking about it. You look like a dirty joke there. I'm cool with that. SVS makes some awesome subs. Yeah, I want the wife won't be happy. Wife won't be happy. with the subs. Like if SVS sent me a bunch of subs to review, I'm in a retail space. What do I care? I'm in a retail space right here. You like subs? Oh, she likes subs. Keeper. She's a keeper. Yeah, I'm gonna probably end this at at an hour. PB13 Ultra, yes, two of them, right? Two PB13 Ultras. End game. Ten inch makes my window flex half an inch on the 17, 17 hertz. Are you serious? Your windows flex half an inch. That's not good. That's not good. Did you? You should see my windows. These are not windows that I'd want to flex here. Look at this. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> we don't want to flex those half an inch. Yeah, I'm gonna cut this off at an hour, so I'm gonna wrap it up. What was the redacted? Pizza man. Um, I don't know. Oh, we ordered food? I ordered pizza. Hell yeah. I did pick up a good wife. <laughs> did you see the Adantes? Yes, I did. I didn't get to hear them like I didn't get to really like listen to listen listen to them. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm hoping that I'm gonna make friends with them and say, "Hey, Chris, Andrew Jones, let me uh, let me check out those uh, Adantes." Yeah. The Dayton with 16 cubic feet, five hertz. What the heck? Hold on. 16 cubic feet playing it at five. hertz hurts five hurts what i know well those are dante's man those are dante's i think see once you get into a certain price point it's, it starts getting really tough you know what i mean because i would prefer to like buy some speakers and then if i don't like them be able to like sell them on craigslist but i feel like at that price point a thousand dollar price point i feel like it's gonna be harder to sell right harder to sell than 200 250 stuff like that uh oh the oh shoot you're right i didn't i didn't finish the devilay story uh at elac so i asked chris what he thought of the phantom golds and he was like you know what i was pretty impressed with them i don't know how they actually fit all that technology in there uh, at that price point so if you don't know the phantom golds are like three thousand bucks somewhere around there and, which to me is expensive, but he was saying that that's a lot of a lot of tech to put in there at that price. He doesn't know how they're making money with that. So that's that's a good good thing to say, good thing to hear. If I were uh, WLA, I'd be happy to hear that. Uh, isn't bad. Yeah, we should set up something. Whoever's here in SoCal, my shop is here in Burbank, so. Yeah, whenever you guys want to meet up, you guys can always come by, you know, come by and say hi. You know, I don't think it's a secret. My shop name is right there, Caught the Vapors, Burbank. Come by whenever you want, say hi. I'm a nice guy. And that's that's pretty much it. We're at an hour now. Um, so this video is going to be private, so this is the last time you'll ever see it. Anyway, good hanging out with you guys. Oh yeah, um, subscribe to my Patreon if you want. I have a podcast, I have other stuff on there. I'm gonna have uh, an extended interview with Andrew Jones, so what, we're gonna, what I'm gonna end up posting is gonna be a shortened version, so you're gonna see a lot more if you are uh, in, my, in my Patreon, one of my Patreon groups uh, support. Huh? Yeah, I know. Brian, maybe we can meet up one day. Um, but yeah, anyway, 
uh, patreon.com forward slash Joe and tell if you want to if you want to subscribe or support whatever you call that um, anyway good hanging out with you guys I'll talk to you later bye bye